A startling statistic, the Tampa Bay area is among one of the deadliest places for pedestrians. In a metro area where 1,300 people have died in a decade. Unsafe roads and dangerous intersections putting residents at risk. And all you hear is something go boom, and everybody come outside and look like there's another one. My wife was T-boned about a year and a half ago. Improvement projects are underway, but stalled construction is causing problems for local businesses. Our staff was having to drive over curbs just to get to work. So if people that we pay to come to work can barely get here, who's going to go out of their way to pay to be here? Today, we're listening to your concerns as we look into what more is being done to improve safety in Tampa Bay. Hello and welcome to a special edition of ABC Action News driving Tampa Bay forward. I'm Dia Riley. For the last several months, we've heard your concerns about dozens of dangerous roads across Tampa Bay from intersections to highways to construction projects. We've looked into every tip we received from you throughout the next half hour. We'll highlight some of the biggest areas of concern along with what local leaders are doing to make improvements. We begin in Hillsborough County, where millions of dollars will be used to make changes to one of the most historic neighborhoods in Tampa. Palmetto Beach will undergo a major facelift thanks to a federal grant. ABC Action News reporter Kenny McCormick has details. I spoke to several people in Palmetto Beach who say they're ecstatic their neighborhood is getting some attention and funding. Flooding and transportation are two of the hot topic issues the city is looking to resolve, and neighbors tell me this project is long overdue. This is a, a wonderful neighborhood, but it's been underfunded. Years of underfunding have led to some bigger issues in Palmetto Beach. I spoke to Denise Reddick. She's been part of the community since 1974. When my parents located their coffee roastery from downtown Tampa here to Palmetto Beach. Reddick owns 22nd Street Coffee Shop. She hears the issues people in the area face every day and says the changes are much needed. Little things like the sidewalks, uh, the street lights, the seawall, all, all of this infrastructure has been neglected. Cracked sidewalks, speeders, and flooding are common issues people in the Palmetto Beach area tell me they face. But after a $24.7 million grant secured from the federal level, residents can expect some big upgrades. I think probably one of the major items is, is reconstruction of the seawall. Um, that's about uh, $8 million of the $24 million in the grant. Neighbors say flooding is an issue they consistently deal with, even during the minor summer storms. Water comes up over the seawall, flooding into the neighborhood and people's homes. Reconstruction of the seawall aims to help with that problem. The project focuses on Bermuda Boulevard, and this is what the final product will look like. There will be an added trail so people can walk along the water, landscape enhancements, pedestrian crossings, plus the city says they'll resurface and narrow the roadways. People just race down this street, so it's not been the safest. Christy Holt raised her four kids in this house just off Bermuda Boulevard. Speeders and roadway issues are her biggest concern, especially after a car crashed into her fence just a few weeks ago. I don't know how fast you had to be going. And Luckily, sure her and her kids were not in the yard at the time of the crash, but safety is her top priority. She tells me she thinks this project will help. Both Holt and Reddick say they're ready for the Pathways to Palmetto project to get underway. Oh, we're all for it, yes. They're very needed and it, it's a wonderful neighborhood. And I really did not hear much pushback on this project. The only concern I read was a Facebook comment about people upset they can no longer sit along that seawall. I reached out to those people for comment but didn't hear back. Now the city is working to finalize the project plans. This should all take about five years to complete. Reporting in Tampa, Keely McCormick, ABC Action News. Major changes are coming to two of Hillsborough County's most dangerous roads. Here's a map of the area that we're talking about. It's Sly Avenue and Waters Avenue. Both roads are four lanes wide with two in each direction. They provide access to and from I-275. According to newly released reports between 2018 and 2022, there were 246 crashes that resulted in injuries and deaths along Sly and Waters Avenues. There were 10 deaths and 33 life altering injuries. 27 of the crashes involved a pedestrian or bicyclist. Business owners along the road say the problem is only getting worse. There are a lot of people out here moving around and the roads right now uh, are designed to prioritize 
fast car movement. Even a little bit of a reduction in speed can make a big difference in whether somebody gets home safely or not. The improvements coming include expanding the roads, reducing the number of lanes and adding a center median and lowering the speed limit. Transportation leaders say they hope it's a step in reducing the number of crashes in the area. We're driving Tampa Bay forward now, looking into the latest report about pedestrian deaths around the country, and the numbers show in most major cities the problem is getting worse. ABC Action News reporter Eric Waxler is driving Tampa Bay forward with a look at the problems here in the Bay Area. Numbers which have been bad the last couple times we've done this report. We last issued it in 2022, 2021 before that, um, that it's still getting worse. Steve Davis is the Assistant Vice President of Transportation Strategy for Smart Growth America. He authored this report called Dangerous by Design, which says streets in most metropolitan areas are designed primarily to move cars quickly at the expense of keeping everyone safe. The Memphis metro area is the most dangerous, according to the report, with more than five pedestrian deaths per 100,000 crashes. Tampa comes in eighth on the list with 3.75 pedestrian deaths per 100,000 accidents. Davis says most of these deaths are happening on state-controlled roads, and the Florida Department of Transportation needs to step up on added safety measures. In a metro area where 1,300 people have died in a decade, doing it in spots or having six projects that you can point to uh, is not sufficient. There, there should be 60 or 600 projects to point to. FDOT and others have worked to make things safer with more traffic signals and crosswalks. The city of Tampa launched its Vision Zero program two years ago, targeting trouble spots with high visibility crosswalks and flashing beacons. You've got to take dramatic steps. You can't keep doing largely what you've been doing and make little tweaks and make small interventions. It needs to be um, a pretty dramatic paradigm shift. Smart Growth America has an interactive map where you can see the Bay Area's pedestrian deaths from 2008 to 2022. As you zoom in, you see our area's most dangerous roads, including Hillsborough Avenue on one side of the Bay and US-19 on the other. Eddie Mullally lives in Tarpon Springs and likes to walk on the Pinellas Trail to keep safe. Like the areas going to the beach from here is a, is a real dangerous walk. So there's just certain areas, and thankfully we do have the trail, which is a very safe walk. The study also found not everyone lives and walks with the same risk. It says black and Native Americans, older adults, and people in low-income communities died at higher rates than others. Davis says even cities at the bottom of the list have higher pedestrian death rates than cities in Western Europe, and design has a big impact. Even being down at the bottom of this list is um, is a better place to be, um, but it's still numbers that that, uh, you know, exceed the levels of death that we see in other countries that have all the same things that we have. They have distracted driving, they have drunk driving, they have cell phones, they have, you know, all of these things, yet they've managed to find a recipe um, that uh, leads to more safety. Davis says he sees the issue getting more attention, which will hopefully lead to change. More than 7,600 people were hit by vehicles and killed while walking in the U.S. in 2022. In Tampa, Eric Waxler, ABC Action News. We're getting answers now on a story we've been following for years. Clearwater City leaders unanimously agreed to move forward with safety upgrades on Drew Street. It's a street in Clearwater known for its narrow lanes, speeding drivers and crashes. The new plan includes reducing lanes in only one portion of the road between Myrtle Avenue and North Osceola Avenue. It also includes lane repurposing, wider bike lanes, new turn lanes, and improvements made at key intersections. FDOT will now develop a final design and construction is expected to begin in 2026. Still ahead, we're looking into what a new report calls the most dangerous road in Florida. After the break, we're driving Tampa Bay forward, showing the dangers on US 19 in Pasco and Pinellas counties. I-275 is crazy at like 5 p.m., 7 a.m. It's just crazy all the time. And stuck in traffic with what feels like no end in sight. Still ahead, we're going in depth on some of the solutions coming to our busiest roads. Plus why commuters say it's still not enough. I'm Casey Albritton in Pinellas County. US 19 has been named one of the most dangerous roads in the state by a recent study. Ambulances come by 
all the time, and I mean all the time. Eva Lizette works at a natural soap shop along US 19 and says the road can be stressful to drive on. You do see a lot of crashes, a lot of cars on the side of the road, a lot of stuff that flies off of people's cars, you know, more so lately I've noticed in these last like maybe four months or so. When she's on US 19, she takes her time. Swerving out of the way to miss a half chair or a partial comforter is not the best thing to do when you're going uh, 55. She's not the only one who's noticed the issues. A new study by Consumer Affairs states US 19 is ranked the most dangerous road in the state by county. Specifically, it has the most deaths in Pasco and Pinellas counties. It carries a lot of cars, often traveling at very high rates of speed. So crashes are very common, especially at the intersections along the roadway. The study shows 94 people have died in the Pinellas County portion of US 19 since 2020. And in the Pasco County portion, there have been 68 deaths. Chelsea Favera with Ford Pinellas says those numbers are heartbreaking, but not shocking. US 19 is one of our most dangerous roadways, but it's also the longest roadway in Pinellas County and the roadway that carries the most amount of traffic. So that's really why you're naturally going to see more crashes along it. Residents and business owners tell me they want to see some improvements made to US 19 as soon as possible. Favero says construction to add interchanges is being done at US 19 and Curlew Road to improve safety and mobility. We do plan to focus pretty heavily on this corridor in the next few years. Lizette believes the traffic issues along US 19 keeps people from stopping by her shop and hopes that'll change soon. We do have an amazing array of things here and even in this plaza, there's so much to offer and it would be so great to see more people here. I'm Pinellas County reporter Casey Albert and ABC Action News. Moving now to our in-depth reporting on traffic backups in the Bay Area. With more and more people moving to the Tampa Bay Area, local roads are being put to the test. But now construction projects are underway on both sides of the Bay to expand expressways and bridges. ABC Action News reporter Lydia Vasquez shares what's in the works and why some commuters argue it's still not enough. Here in St. Pete, I-275, we never had backups before. Now we're bottlenecking, you know, in the middle of the day. Construction, congestion, when will traffic get better? That's the question drivers want answers to, and the challenge officials say they're working to address as the Tampa Bay area continues to deal with rapid population growth. If you look at where we are today, we're probably about 20% over today where we were projecting ourselves this year pre-pandemic. The Tampa Hillsborough Expressway Authority says the East Selman expansion is expected to help. Thea is looking into adding additional lanes on the Selman Expressway from the I-4 connector to US-301 in Hillsboro, hoping to break up the bottlenecks near Falkenberg and downtown and reduce congestion in the Brandon area. You're going to start to see greater accessibility from the system from out in Brandon. So, you know, we're starting to see more and more balanced traffic between the reversible uh, express lanes up top and then the local lanes underneath. You've probably noticed the construction along I-275 as the Gateway Express expressway project is underway. FDOT leaders say construction on it will wrap up within weeks. I-275 is crazy at like 5 p.m., 7 a.m. It's just crazy all the time. The project will create two four-lane elevated tolled roadways. Part of the project will widen I-275 to create toll lanes, one in each direction from south of Gandy Boulevard to 4th Street North. FDOT says the 275 express lanes will be told 24 hours a day, seven days a week, adding the goal of express lanes is to ease congestion, improve traffic flow, and give drivers travel options. And flying over the Howard Franklin, where a new southbound westbound interstate bridge is being built. It will have eight lanes, four will be express lanes, two lanes from St. Pete toward Tampa, and two lanes from Tampa toward St. Pete. The existing bridge will be converted to the new northbound eastbound I-275. Construction is expected to be completed in late of 2025. And I think that the more we build, the more there they'll come. So I think that, yeah, I mean, it'll expand and it'll help, but more as more people keep coming, pretty soon that's not going to be enough. In Pinellas County, I'm Lydia Vasquez, ABC Action News. So I had a look at how road improvement projects can impact businesses. The owners of a local coffee shop share the challenges they faced just trying to stay open during construction.
welcome back. You've sent us tips about dangerous roads impacting your safety. You've also let us know about major construction projects impacting businesses. You might remember back in January, a Tampa Heights coffee shop was struggling to stay open. The owners told us a city road construction project was keeping customers away. They were worried that they might have to close their business. Well, just one week after our story aired, the response was overwhelming. ABC Action News reporter Larissa Scott shows us the response from city leaders and the community. For months, the owners of King State, a Tampa coffee shop and bar, have been fighting to hear this sound again, traffic. Just seeing people drive on this road has been incredible. You know, it's just an instant feeling of like we're headed in the right way. But traffic wasn't flowing in both directions here on Florabraska Avenue a few days ago. That's because the city of Tampa has been working on a road improvement project along Florabraska, which put King State in the middle of a construction zone. When we first visited King State last week, traffic to the coffee shop was blocked coming from the west on Florabraska, with detour signs directing drivers away from the construction and away from King State. The owners tell us access to their shop had been difficult for customers for the past few months, causing them to take a big hit in revenue. They also say they had no warning that construction would happen in front of their shop. That's why they took their concerns to city council last week. So we just really spoke to the fact that, you know, we're doing COVID numbers in quarter four of 2023 and the only way anyone got through COVID was with assistance, and that's what we need. After our story first aired, city officials were on site to take a look at what was going on. Crews have since removed detour signs in front of King State, and officials tell us they're working on better signage to let drivers know the coffee shop is still open. Two-way traffic has also been temporarily reopened until next Thursday. It's been months since it's felt anything like this. The owners tell us Mayor Jane Castor also personally called them. In her words, she's going to look into it and try to take care of it. In the meantime, the city tells us in part, quote, we acknowledge that these actions were reactive due to insufficient proactive efforts and we are committed to doing better. It's really just waiting on the city to come in and try to repair what we've lost. Yeah, let me get a latte. While King State waits for a fix, they tell us as word got out, the community support over the past week has been overwhelming. We had a line almost to the door, people were parking on the street, nothing was open and they just showed up and it was, it was really, you know, very emotional. And while there's a full parking lot here now, the owners tell me they hope this community support will continue. Thanks again for everything. You know, y'all doing this was really huge for us and so we're, we're really thankful that um, people care. Continuing to serve people their daily fix while hoping for their own. In Tampa, Larissa Scott, ABC Action News. And here's a look at some of the images posted on King State's social media pages over the last several months. The owners say business is still thriving and lanes on Florida Nebraska Avenue in front of their store have remained open. Still ahead, construction is now underway to make a busy South Tampa Road safer. The improvements coming and when the project is expected to be finished. Before we go, we have an update on a South Tampa road a lot of you have raised concerns about. This is Inner Bay Boulevard, a narrow two lane road known for congestion. Many people say they don't feel the road is safe for pedestrians and bicyclists because of gaps along the sidewalk. The city says work is now underway to address those concerns. Construction includes adding a center turn lane, eight new crosswalks and a pedestrian trail. The work is expected to take two and a half years. We want to thank you for joining us for this special edition of ABC Action News driving Tampa Bay forward. Over the past half hour, we've showcased your concerns, highlighted some of the most dangerous roads and looked into how local leaders are planning on improving safety along those areas. To see the stories that we covered today and more, just go to our website, abcactionnews.com slash driving. And as always, if you have concerns about a road or construction project impacting your commute or your neighborhood, Send us a message. We'll look into it for you. Scan the QR code on your screen. This is going to take you to our Driving Tampa Bay Forward page. It lists our tip line and our email information. And we want you to know we look into every tip we receive. I'm Dia Riley. Thanks again for watching.